Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are going to look at using apps for consumers. Stay tuned. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. Now, what do I mean about apps for consumers? So I wanna look at apps from the perspective of someone that's not a report author or content author inside of Power BI. So this is just someone that's just using Power BI. I'm just looking at reports, I'm consuming data, and then I'm making decisions based on that data. What I wanna do is go through what does that experience look like from an app perspective? Before we get into that, let me just real quick, what is an app? And so an app is the main distribution model with inside of Power BI. So this is a set of dashboards, reports, and data sets that are put into a container that you can then consume and navigate. That's what it is at a high level. I'll have a link down below in the description to the actual documentation for apps. All right, enough of this talking. Let's head over to my computer and take a look. Okay, we are looking at Power BI. So I'm just logged in. I see my workspace. So this is the stuff that's just in my personal sandbox. And for most users, this is what you're going to have because you may not have a pro license, which means you can't get to other app workspaces. And so what do we do in that scenario? So what we need to do is consume apps. So apps will be published from an app workspace by some other user, and then we can go ahead and consume those. When an app is first shared, there is a URL that's generated and someone may have sent you that URL directly. If you don't have that and you're just inside of app.powerbi.com, the first thing that you want to do is head over to the app section. So we can do that, go to apps, and these are the apps that I have access to. There are some licensing requirements that come with apps. And so either you're gonna to have to have a pro license to consume those apps, or the content's gonna be backed by premium capacity. In general, don't worry about that. Just know that if you don't meet those requirements, you will get prompted with a message basically saying that you need a pro license. So if you hit that, don't be alarmed. It just means that it's not backed by the appropriate things and you'll have to go talk to your administrator to get that sorted out if you need to actually use it. So for this case, let's just assume that we've met those requirements. All right, I've already got two apps available for me in the app section. You may find that there are some already there for you. These can be pre-installed and available for you when you sign in. If there's an app out there and you don't see it listed here, we can just select the get more apps and this will bring up app source. We will be defaulted to our organization. So these are apps that are published with inside of my organization. And I can go grab a given item that maybe I didn't have before. You will only see items here that you have access to. And so if you know it exists, but you don't see it here, go talk to the owner of the app and ask them to give you access to it. There's also other apps that you can go grab that are pre-configured ones for online services. So you can check those out as well. And when you have these apps, there's a few things you can do. First off, I can hover over it. I can select the star, which will favorite that app for me. And we'll come back to that in a second. Also, if it's not a pre-installed app, I can go ahead and delete that app as well. So I can just remove it from my list if I don't need it any longer. In this case, let me go ahead and favorite it. And when you favorite the app, what'll happen is if you go to the favorite section, you will actually see that app right there ready for you when you need it. So that can help reduce the clutter if there's a lot of apps that you have access to. Let's go back to the app section and we will go ahead and go into our app. Now apps can be configured to default to a couple of things. One, they can default to a dashboard, they can default to a report, or they could default to the list of content. For this example, we're defaulting to a report. This is configured by the person who published the app. And so it's a typical report. We can work with it as we normally would. So I can slice and dice on things. I can, you know, play around with the data, explore it a little bit and get more insights. If I want to see the rest of the content in the app, I can go to the upper right and I'll see a couple of lines here. I can select that and that takes me to the list of items within this app. And so this is all of the dashboards, reports, and if you expand it, the data sets inside of this app. And from here, I can click on any one of these to go to the item in question. Let's go back out, I can go to a report. And I can come back out and go to another report. From those reports, I also have some items. I can see what's related to these items. So I can see the, so I can go through and I can see which reports and data sets are bound to this dashboard, so on and so forth. 
I can also, for reports, I can go and get quick insights. I can also do analyze in Excel. So if I wanna play around with this data inside of a pivot table inside of Excel, I have that option as well. So I can explore it a little further. Up top, you'll just see a quick list of the number of items inside of this app, just for quick reference. And you'll also see up above the star is yellowed, which means I've already favorited this app inside of Power BI. So if I go into a report, one of the things I can also do is I can go ahead and have those report features that are available for me. I'll have another video that walks through just report features in general, but just know that those items are available for you as well. One thing that I can't do is share these items out with other folks. The app is meant as a consumption model only. And so if we do wanna share these reports or dashboards, that has to be done from the actual app workspace. So as a consumer of the app, you're not gonna have that capability. I also can't share this app out with other folks. You'd have to go back to the owner of the app and ask them to update the access list in order to allow other folks to look at it. Also, if we go back to the home screen, the other thing you will see down below is your app will surface up under my app section. It'll also surface up under recents. And there's gonna be other recommendations for you. So if there's other apps in your organization, you can see those down in the recommended app section. So these may be items of interest for you that you may wanna end up using. All right, that was a quick look at apps and how you can use those as a report consumer or just a consumer inside of Power BI. So someone that's looking at this from a read-only perspective. I would love to know your thoughts. Let me know if you have any questions. You can leave that down in the comments below and I will answer as best as I can. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.